Hi everyone, uh, this is Professor Benjamin and we have made it through week two of this course. So we're looking forward to week three of this course. Um, <clears throat> just a couple housekeeping items. Number one, remember that only six students are supposed to answer each post. Um, so if you're the seventh, eighth, ninth person to answer a post, you will not receive credit or you'll receive partial credit for your post. So it's absolutely essential that you go in and actually look at the responses that students have made. And if you see something reaching close to the six person limit, then I would stay away from that question. Um, most of you are doing a great job. Um, I've seen a huge improvement on posts. So initial posts need to be at least 300 words. They need to use sources. Um, they have to con contain um, the information from the sources in your post so you know don't just slap at the bottom an MLA formatting source um, and not use it in your post um, and you'll see that a lot of the articles feed off of each other so reading just one article is not going to help you you have to read everything in unison so there is no quiz due by Sunday 1159 of this week um, the Coming up, though, we have a quiz on Chapter 2 of the textbook. Um, so this week coming up, we're going to cover Session 3, which is Ethics, Economics, and Policy. You'll see here you have an initial post due by uh, Wednesday, a response post due by Friday, and then you also have your quiz due by February 3rd, 1159. And this is on Chapter 2, and you can see here, of the textbook. Uh, a couple students asked me some questions about the quizzes. Um, the best and uh, the most efficient way to study for the quizzes to read the chapter first then go back and sticky note um, and maybe write some some annotations um, on sticky notes so you know exactly where to go in the textbook the, the hardest part is it's an open book test um, and so a lot of times you people don't study for open book tests because it's open book um, but actually you really need to prepare so you need to know what sections stuff is found in and where to flip to so that you know where to find the information for the quiz Okay, um, so it's absolutely essential. Read it first, then go back, put some sticky notes all over the place, and then uh, take the quiz. And also, when you take the quiz, try and answer some of the questions that you think you know the answers to first, and then go back and check the answers again. So this week coming up, we have a couple articles that we have to read. Number one, pricing the price list. So this is a great article. It's about putting a price tag on nature. Yes, we can put a price tag on nature. Your textbook says um, that no, we can't put a price tag on nature, but actually we can, it's just not accurate. So this article, along with the textbook um, on hedonic evaluation, ecological evaluation, and contingent evaluation, talk about the issues with how we put a price tag on nature. So using surveys, asking students what they're willing, uh, asking not students, but people what they're willing to pay rather than what they are going to pay are two different things. So, hey, what I'm willing to pay to protect the bald eagle is one thing, but when it comes push to shove, what I actually put in the envelope is something different. So there's a lot, and also depending upon um, how closely tied I am to the bald eagle. So for example, sometimes if you're a military member, then you're more closely tied to the bald eagle than maybe somebody who isn't. So there's a lot of factors, uh, human factors that are play a role in how much we're willing to spend um, and how, how we calculate the costs of nature. So that's there. Then another topic that you're going to cover this week is cap and trade. So this is um, a way that we can actually put a price tag on nature, but by trading credits. Um, and there's a wonderful little um, video that tells you the problems with cap and trade. Um, although there are a lot of problems with cap and trade, a lot of uh, people are for cap and trade. And that is that we think sometimes if we put a value on nature, we might be able to, people might actually be willing to protect it um, if they can make money off of it. And so cap and trade is the selling of pollution credits um, from facility to facility. So you'll read about that. Um, and there were a couple different things here, additional articles. Uh, in this section, we also talk about environmental injustice, which is um, the issue where everyone is not the the environment is not equal in a, a lot of uh, in a lot of areas, and a lot of times this happens where um, environments are exploited uh, due to gender, uh, individuals' lack of income, individuals' lack of education, and individual's race. A lot of times in specific areas, um, we exploit the environment and it's on purpose because we know, for example, maybe people 
um, in lower income neighborhoods, we, ex we tend to exploit the neighborhoods. Um, and the reason we do this is because we know people work jobs so they might not be able to come out to the town meetings. Um, I worked on a case in Camden where a um, sewage treatment plant was slated for a predominantly white neighborhood. Um, and the people came out in droves to fight it and they were able to to say we don't want this in our neighborhood and what happened was is that same sewage treatment plant got put in South Camden um, and it, it totally was environmental injustice and the citizens of South Ac South Camden sued and won a lawsuit because it was environmental injustice it totally was um, so that's a um, this is a good article here um, also this talks about military families that were exploited so just you know a lot of people are exploited in the environmental world so there's a lot here in ethics economics and policy there's also a question about um, Thoreau and Emerson so you can look up that information um, there is a question about intrinsic and instrumental value um, intrinsic value is value unto itself instrumental value is the value that the item gives to us um, and so there's a big debate in the world as to whether nature actually has intrinsic value whether it has value unto itself or whether its value is based upon how it fits into the ecosystem um, and so there's a lot of questions about whether nature should have intrinsic value whether that um, you know because we technically can't replace a bee with a mechanical bee there's something missing there so if there's something missing there if, if for example if you see a painting on the wall right what makes a painting the original different than the um, than the the um, mass-produced versions of that is there something unique about it correct it has value unto itself so if we were to replace bees with maybe mechanical bees that could do the exact same thing there's still something missing which means that bee has intrinsic value and so there's a lot of questions with intrinsic instrumental value um, in terms of uh, environmental ethics so this uh, section talks with ethics economics and policy so you'll see a lot of different things mixed together in this chapter um, and but you're doing a great job keep it up uh, we're pushing forward with the semester um, if you have questions feel free to reach out I don't mind answering your questions um, and I look forward to your posts this week some of you are doing a great job some of you just need to pick up the pace a little bit I know there's a lot going on uh, but you need to pick up the pace a little bit okay um, so have a fantastic week if you have any questions feel free to reach out